These series of diagrams help explain the link between price elasticity of demand and total revenue. There are two ways you can do this. First of all, you can just use an ordinary straight line demand curve. This demand curve is drawn very shallow and so represents an elastic demand curve. Remember, near horizontal means elastic. You can see that if you reduce the price of this product, you get a larger increase in the quantity demanded, a more than proportionate increase. The price elasticity demand figure will be greater than one. Originally, the total revenue was calculated by the price multiplied by the quantity sold, which gave you this blue shaded area. If you reduce the price when demand is elastic, you can see that you end up with a much bigger total revenue. So, reduce the price when demand is elastic, and total revenue will increase. If it's inelastic, you get exactly the opposite. You get a large decrease in price, means that there will only be a small increase in the quantity demanded because people don't rush it out and buy this product. Once again, the original price multiplied by the original quantity gives you the original total revenue. But with this large decrease in price, and only a disproportionately small increase in quantity demanded, the total revenue, as shown by the red box, is now smaller. So when demand is inelastic, if you decrease the price, you decrease your total revenue. An alternative way of showing the same thing is to use this diagram here. Straight line demand curve on the top, total revenue curve on the bottom. The midpoint here is equal to the highest point there. And you know that as you go up the demand curve, demand becomes more elastic. So if we take somewhere in the top half where demand is elastic, the decrease in price leads to, follow the blue line down, that's your original total revenue, decrease the price, follow the red line down, leads to an increase in total revenue. The conclusion is exactly the same as with this diagram here. It's just a different way of showing the same thing. Likewise, you could take two points in this here, this part of the demand curve, which is inelastic, and you'd end up with the same result as you did on the other one.